when even Ben Bernanke is telling you that your response to inflation is too lame, maybe it might be a little signal to the Fed. In retrospect, yes, it was a mistake, and I think they agree it was a mistake. Well, hello there, my friends. Chris Marcus here with you for RKD Economics and a special episode of the show, because obviously when Ben... Nobody really understands gold prices. Bernanke speaks, I listen, and let's just say that when even Ben Bernanke is telling you that your response to inflation is too lame and your game's too weak... Maybe it might be a little signal to the Fed because, incredibly enough, he's saying the Fed is too slow in its response to inflation, and that's a mistake. I mean, I guess on one end, I certainly agree, although he's kind of the, the guy that left them in that position. But let's dig in and see what Ben was saying because here, former Fed Reserve Chair Ben Bernanke said so the central bank erred in waiting to address an inflation problem that has turned into the worst episode in U.S. financial history since the 1980s. I guess you could agree with them. The question is, why did they delay that? Why did they delay their response in waiting so long to raise interest rates? The Fed said they weren't going to begin to raise rates until certain criteria were met, first of all. Secondly, until they had... Um, uh, QE had gotten to a certain point, and they were going to taper first, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so the forward guidance, I think, overall on the margin uh, slowed the response of the Fed to the um, inflation problem to, to, to some extent. What is he talking about? So does that mean it was a mistake? Uh, well, they were. They had different. So th this is a complicated question. The question is, why did they delay that? I think that, why did they delay their response? I think, in retrospect, yes, it was a mistake, and I think they agree it was a mistake. Uh, there were a number of reasons for it. One of the reasons was that they wanted not to shock the market. They wanted to avoid, uh, Jay Powell was on my board during the taper tantrum in 2013, which was a very unpleasant experience. He wanted to avoid that kind of thing by giving people as much warning as possible. Now, I don't know if it was Jay Powell being on the board that was an unpleasant experience or the way things went, but we'll continue. And so that gradualism uh, was one of several reasons um, why the Fed didn't respond more quickly the uh, inflationary pressure in the middle of 2021. 20, uh, so basically, Bernanke's saying that the Fed is raising interest rates and cleaning up his mess too late, which is technically true, a little bit disingenuous, perhaps, since he's the one who created the mess. But how does he think the thing has worked out overall? But I thought that over this year that those things would begin to reverse. I still think they will reverse eventually, but clearly they've been um, uh, more persistent more problematic than we, uh, than we, I, the FOMC, had thought. Now, of course, when it comes to the supply chains or the cause of the inflation, what did Ben have to say about that? The pandemic has snarled supply chains around the world. That has helped drive up prices. So, of course, that means the inflation has nothing to do with the Fed's monetary policy, all the pandemic's fault once again. The Fed believed in the middle of 2021 that these factors would likely solve themselves over time. That, in other words, that the supply shocks were, quote, transitory, uh, and so that they didn't need to respond to the early stages of inflation because it was going to go away by itself. It's incredibly unlikely. That proved wrong. Um, so there were, there were a couple of, of issues, I think, that are related primarily to the pandemic itself and, and the way that it scrambled the usual indicators that made it harder for the Fed to read the economy. Of course, nothing in relation to the Fed's monetary policy. I guess that I still tend to believe that some of these forces uh, pushing up inflation, like the supply chains, like the preference for durable goods over services, um, and some of the commodity price increases, gas prices and so on, uh, that they will at least stabilize and begin to moderate uh, sometime during this year, which would mean that inflation will come down to some extent. Okay, so far that's not happening. I'm just saying. Here, April producer price index climbs 11% from a year ago. It's not slightly over their mandate. These guys are going to be out there chest thumping if, uh, if next month it's 10%. Hey, look, inflation's moderating. Okay, it's still 10% still higher. If that happens, the Fed would have to raise rates, perhaps uh, moderately above neutral, say in the threes somewhere. Excuse me, that was that was the capper. The Fed would have to raise rates, perhaps 
uh, moderately above neutral, say in the threes somewhere. Moderately above neutral in the threes somewhere. Inflation's checking in at 11%. <laughs> CPI is over 8% every month. And 3% is moderately above neutral. Greenspan, following taking rates down to 1% for a year, he took rates up to five and a quarter percent. And I don't know if you would call that neutral or just he couldn't take any more pain. Paul Volcker, back in 1980, the same crisis that Ben Bernanke is comparing the current model to, you're in the beginning, said central bank erred in waiting to address an inflation problem that has turned into the worst episode in U.S. financial history since early 1980s. Paul Volcker went up to 20% then. Now somewhere in the threes is what Ben Bernanke and the Fed are considering neutral. That's what they consider a fair free market interest rate. In the United States of America, land of the free, home of the brave, honor, integrity, solid financial markets. But as Jay Powell has pointed out, the economy is pretty strong. But interest rates are capped at 3% by the Federal Reserve, basically stiffing it to anyone counting on a fixed income over the next rest of history. According to that model, with the U.S. debt at 30 trillion and counting, no end in sight, Joe Biden has become an arms dealer to Ukraine, but now 3% in the threes, Fed funds, that's moderately above neutral. When they do that, um, they'll slow demand. So right there, you actually heard what is their actual plan. And you may hear that term increasingly going forward, demand destruction. They're just gonna jack up interest rates. So there's so much pain that that brings down the ability of the consumer to buy things. That's how he's gonna keep inflation in check. That's how his friends advocate keeping inflation in check. They'll slow demand. But as Jay Powell has pointed out, the economy is pretty strong. We're not going into recession as often. And then he says the economy is strong. Commodities are soaring because of Fed's inflation policy, the pandemic, which these guys have their fingerprints all over and financing of it, has blasted the supply chains. We're seeing something that looks like the verge of World War III breaking out. Debt is soaring. <laughs> you can't get... You could have, they couldn't get interest rates past, past 2.5% in 2018 before the thing melted down. We're not even at 2% now. And the equity markets are getting clobbered. He's telling you that if they keep raising interest rates, they're going to keep getting clobbered. When they do that, um, they'll slow demand. But that's a strong economy, according to Ben Bernanke. By the way, his new book, 21st Century Monetary Policy, the Federal Reserve from the Great Inflation rushed to the bookstore to buy it now. <laughs> in fact, the underlying economy, as we recover from the pandemic, is quite strong. We have a very strong labor market, for example. Rock we solid. have a strong financial system. We have strong balance sheets. Strong housing market, too. Sounds like things are going well there as mortgage rates are increasing. So if, if the uh, inflation slows, as I expect it ultimately will, although I've been disappointed about how slow that process is, then the Fed should not have to raise rates, you know, too far. And what we would get then would be a slowing, a slowing of the economy, maybe even a stall, but not a severe recession. The severe recession would only come if these other factors simply do not cooperate. He just said you're going to get a recession if they keep raising interest rates. And in terms of inflation slowing, I think we'll actually see silver break $30 before inflation slows to anything that I would want to live under. The more the Fed has to tighten in order to get inflation down, the bigger the chance of a recession and the more severe it will be. The more the Fed has to tighten, the more the chance of a recession. Well, the Fed's tightening. They're talking about going 75 basis points. So it sounds like that's not headed in the right direction, especially if that means the more severe the recession is going to be. Depends in turn on what happens to these factors they can't control, like the supply chains and the commodity prices. Of course. So... That prediction requires you to make a prediction not only about the Fed's behavior, but about a lot of other things, the Ukraine war, et cetera. So it's a very hard thing, very uncertain thing to say. Well, if it's so uncertain and hard to say, then couldn't he have acknowledged that before he put us in this mess? If inflation expectations, as measured by break-evens in the inflation-protected securities market, as measured by surveys and so on, begin to move up in a significant way, that people have lost confidence in the credibility of the Fed, 
the Fed will have to react much more strongly, and the effects in the economy will be much more uh, deleterious. And how concerned are you about that? This is a big difference between uh, today and the 1970s. In the 1970s, inflation expectations were all over the place, and nobody had any confidence in the Fed uh, that it would bring inflation back down. Today, um, most indicators suggest that people are still pretty confident that the Fed, or maybe some combination of the Fed and the end of the pandemic, will lead to more normal inflation right. in the future. I am not one of the people that has any confidence in the Fed's ability to maneuver this without, without eventually flooding a ton more money into the system. The more the Fed has to tighten in order to get inflation down, the bigger the chance of a recession and the more severe it will be. Anyway, there is the news with Ben Bernanke. I can get a glimmer of what that book is about. And if in the end that leaves you wondering, well, let's say I make money and actually have some to save at the end of the month. If they're printing dollars and a lot of these banks need more printed dollars to stay solvent, what really do you do? And at least how do you begin to approach that question? Well, fortunately, Craig Hemke of TF Metals was on the show recently where he answered that exact question and it's coming your way now.